federal government to end payment of fuel subsidy by end of June 2023. Son of assassinated couple killed on New Year Day buried in Abelkuta. A Labour Party candidate Peter Obi leads Tinubu Atipu and Kwakwaso in fresh pres presidency survey. For many thanks for joining us on News Now. I am Fola Shade Ogurinde. The remains of Ero Luwa Fatinoye, the son of a couple murdered in Abelkuta on New Year Day, has been buried on Tuesday in the Ogun State capital. Ero Luwa was abducted by his parents' killers on Monday and his body was recovered from a river in Adigbe, Obada area of Abelkuta. A brief Christian service witnessed by family members, friends and sympathizers was conducted at a cemetery before the final internment. The remains of the couple were buried earlier on Monday at Lantoro Cemetery in Abelkuta after a church service held at Christ Anglican Church, Ikporuake, in Abelkuta. Meanwhile, the police public relations officer in Ogun State, Abimbola Uyemi, says no stone will be left unturned in ongoing investigations. Just this morning, the son of the couple that who was taken away and thrown into the river, the, his body has been recovered in Ogun River. Investigation has commenced. The homicide session of the State Criminal Investigation Department they are on it. And as we are progressing, we, are going to, we will continue briefing members of the public on the outcome of our investigation. The federal government has held a public presentation and breakdown of highlights of the 21.83 trillion Naira 2023 appropriation bill. The event was held at the main auditorium of the Federal Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning Complex. At the presentation, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zinab Ahmed, disclosed that the federal government will stop the payment of fuel subsidy by the end of June 2023. Our correspondent, Simi Saladigun, has the details in this report. The Ministry of Finance, Budget and National Planning opened its auditorium to the public and commenced the new year with a presentation and breakdown of the just-signed 2023 appropriation bill. The 2023 budget was signed into law by President Mohamed Buhari and passed by the National Assembly on Tuesday, January 3, 2023. Speaking on the budget, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, said the 2023 budget was prepared against the backdrop of continuing global and domestic challenges and was designed to promote social inclusion and strengthen the resilience of the economy. Quite possibly going to continue witnessing some of the global crises that are not abated, specifically the Ukraine, Russia-Ukraine war is not showing any signs of abating. And so that's one major component. The second component is the inflation growth across the world. The monetary authorities globally are still tightening, which means uh, interest, co uh, in, um, interest cost goes up and that, that drives inflation. So it's just for every country to know that these difficulties are there and will be there through 2023 and we have to take our own measures to cushion those uh, measures from running down any economy. Breaking down the budget, the minister disclosed that the government made provisions of 3.36 trillion naira for fuel subsidy payment to cover the first six months of 2023 in line with an 18-month extension announced in early 2022. We're also going to be exiting for a subsidy by the middle of the year. So it will mean more revenue accruing to the Federation. Subsidy cost is a cost to the Federation. It eats up into the oil and gas uh, revenue. So yes, we, are, we prepared this on the optimistic side, um, being assured that the security and the production will be sustained. And if it is sustained, these revenues are uh, realizable. In fact, they are on the conservative side because we always try to be conservative. 
speaking on the depreciation in the contribution of the oil and gas sector to the economy. The minister said this represents the government's resolve to diversify the economy. The agricultural sector has the highest contribution of 23%, followed by the information and, and communications sector, then trade, manufacturing, then the oil and gas sector. The oil and gas sector contribution as at the third quarter of 2023 was just 5.66%. Again, this is to further emphasize that the Nigerian economy is truly, truly diversified. As regards tax waivers, Zainab Ahmed announced the withdrawal of the Pioneer Status Tax Waiver for companies going forward, revealing that a total of 6 trillion naira had been forgone between 2021 to date under its tax waiver scheme. The plan, according to her, will help shore up the federal government's revenue. Simsola TV 360, Abuja. Meanwhile, experts have expressed concern over the 2023 budgets and its basic fundamentals. Speaking earlier to TV360 Nigeria, financial economist Paul Alaje says the revenue target in the budget is unrealistic and unachievable. Yet is that the amounts projected for debt servicing and the plan to borrow additional funds will be detrimental to the economy. Um, so I've seen that the President Buhari and his administration have uh, passed the last budget, which is going to be under his supervision. Uh, it's uh, a bit less than $50 billion, over $21 trillion naira. Uh, government have said wants to spend above 70% of this budget on the current expenditure. Is expecting significant part of this budget to come, I mean, to be on uh, recurrent both uh, debt service and also non-debt recurrent. And government is expecting that significant part of the of the spending will come from borrowings, uh, six point uh, six point six five five for loans. I mean, for debt service, significant proportion is coming on loans. So I've seen I've seen what the president wrote. Uh, over uh, significant amount is also coming from uh, revenue. Government is hoping to generate more from crude oil and to generate the rest from non oil sector. Uh, at best, with what the president has submitted, uh, have passed yesterday, I strongly believe that that budget is not achievable. I believe that the budget is not realistic. And I also believe that uh, the budget, in terms of revenue targets, is what I said is not achievable. There, about, there are some good things about the budget. Because the issues government had with ASU that have made us to stay at home for nearly seven months or more, uh, should be laid to rest because actual interests have been carefully uh, taken care of in the 2023 budget. Eventually, the president has signed it. I've seen some infrastructure that government have done. For instance, Lagos Ibado, which I could say that often used the road about four or five times, that uh, that road is near completion. Just a few portion that is not done. And I've also seen on television the second Niger bridge that has been constructed by the administration. I will say kudos to them. I've also been to some northern part of Nigeria and I've seen what government have done uh, in terms of infrastructure. I will say kudos to them. So for me, I've seen the, 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 the positives of this budget and I've also seen the negatives. I tell you another negatives I've seen in the budget. For the first time in recent history, we are going to spend more on debt service than capital expenditure. What does that mean? Less than six trillion naira is what is going on capital according to the budget. Six point five five. That's more than six trillion naira. We go on debt service, not to pay back debt. So these are issues that uh, we need to that that has been observed in in the twenty twenty three budget just presented. I uh, just signed. I beg your pardon, by President Wari. And now to politics. A newly conducted presidential survey carried out by Market Trends International has placed the Labour Party candidates Peter Obi ahead of Atiku Abubakar of the PDP, Bola Tinobo of the APC, and Rabi Okwakwosu of the NNPP. In a statement by the agency's executive director, Victor Evomeye, 
The former Anambra state governor got the highest favorable rating of 44%, indicating majority of the respondents will vote for the Labour Party candidates in the upcoming presidential election. He further disclosed that findings show that 45 49% of respondents were still undecided on which party they would vote for as, as at December 2021. The All Progressives Congress presidential candidates Bola Tinubu has promised to work to change Kano from a commercial city to a mega city if elected president. Tinubu made us known at the party's presidential rally in the state. As part of activities before the rally, the APC candidates paid a courtesy visit to the palace of the Emir of Kano, Aminu Ado Bayero, to seek his prayers and blessings ahead of the polls. Governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Ganjide, who spoke in the Aousa, in Aousa expressed delight at uh, Bolatinubu's visit and assured him of more support from many of the key stakeholders in the state for victory to be achieved come 2023. In Anambra State, Governor of the State, Chukuma Saludur has condemned the mindless killings in Abosi and Opuno in Indemili North and Oka South Council areas, respectively. Uh, speaking to residents, the governor said all linked to the courts that fought within the communities affected will surely be tracked down and dealt with decisively in accordance with the law. While calling on the people to go about their duties as they enjoy the new year, Saludo assured that the perpetrators of the crime will be apprehended and decisively dealt with. Pro-democracy activists in Kogi State have expressed concerns over alleged utterances and activities of some politicians following the exclusion of Inek Okene in the day President Muhammad Ubari visited the state to commission legacy projects of Governor Yahaya Bello. The activists who made their position known at a press conference in Abuja on Tuesday said the impactful infrastructure projects have exposed what they described as campaigns of uh, against Governor Yahaya as simply unfounded. They further called on politicians in the country to shun all forms of terrorism that could work against a smooth transition process this year. We view with serious concern this recent bomb blast in Okene in Kogi State that coincided with the last visit of President Muhammad Buhari to the state, which was apparently you know, aimed at disrupting the president's schedule or paint a picture of an unsafe state. And for those who have followed you know, the trajectory of the security situation in the country, particularly those of us who are familiar with the fact that Kogi is a peculiar state, a state that has boundary with eight other states in the country becomes one of the states that ordinarily should be so porous when you talk about security, you know. But the last couple of years, I've witnessed a situation whereby the states have received lots of commendation locally and internationally for the way it has been able to manage its internal security, for the way it has been able to manage, you know, the engagement of citizens to protect the state. It was a dastardly crime, to that, no doubt. But more drastically was the evil actions of some politicians in the state who were celebrating the bomb blast. We state unequivocally that security agencies must fish out those unpatriotic politicians and let to have rejoiced at the misfortune of fellow citizens who lost their lives needlessly as a result of actions of terrorists. Uh, we'll take a break here, but still to come, EFCC recovers 13 billionaire illegal fuel subsidy payments details of the story and more right after this break.
The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has fixed Monday 12th December 2022 to Sunday 22nd January 2023 as the dates for the collection of PVCs nationwide from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. daily, including Saturdays and Sundays. All registrants who are yet to collect their PVCs are requested for transfer of registration, as well as those who applied for replacement of lost or damaged PVCs can now visit INEC local government offices where they intend to vote to collect their PVCs. Collection of PVCs will be further extended to ward level for those who are unable to collect theirs at local government offices from Friday 6th to Sunday 15 January 2023. Thereafter, the exercise will be reverted to the local government offices of the INEC until Sunday 22nd January 2023. Remember, only those with PVC can vote on election day. Collect your PVC now to vote. It is your duty. This message is brought to you by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Making your votes count. Consolidating our democracy. Nigerians, elections are here again. Let us shun violence. Let us play the game according to the rules. Do not be a thug. Say no to violence. Let's rise and defeat violence, crime, and sabotage against the peace of our nation. Nigeria is the only country we have. We must do everything to keep it united. We must avoid any act that promotes hate and disintegration. Say no to separatist movement, terrorism, fake news, hate speech, religious bigotry, and any act that tends to divide us as a nation. Watch out for strange gatherings and suspicious movements. Restrict access to sensitive documents and data, the disclosure of which may damage national security. Educate your staff and family, particularly on measures to safeguard information and report security breaches. Apply relevant legal security guidelines to protect yourself and your neighbors. Due to misinformation and wrong choices, some idle persons resort to vices in their greed to get rich quick. They resort to kidnapping killings for rituals and other heinous crimes avoid wrong use of the social media before you broadcast that false message think twice ask whether it will promote peace or violence for safety at home still be security conscious educate your household on safety tips report all suspicious movements and persons to the security agencies nearest to you be a good citizen be patriotic to pass security information, please call 0813-222-2105-0915-339-1309-0908-837-3514 or send a mail to dsspr at dss.gov.ng. This message is from the Department of State Services, DSS. Welcome back. Now here is a recap of some of our top stories tonight. The federal government has held the public presentation and breakdown of highlights of the 21.83 trillion naira 2023 appropriation bill. At the presentation, the Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Zinab Hamid, disclosed that the federal government has said it will stop the payment of fuel subsidy by the end of June 2023. The minister disclosed that the government made provisions of uh, 3.36 trillion naira for fuel subsidy payments to cover the first six months of 2023 in line with the 18-month extension announcement in early 2022. We also told you that the remains of Aroluwa Fatinoye, the son of a couple mother in Abel Hotel on New Year Day, has been buried on Tuesday in the Ogun State capital. Aroluwa was abducted by his parents killers on Monday and his body was recovered from a river in Adigbe Obada area of Abel Kuta. Well, in case you missed any of our news bulletin or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on wwwtv 360 com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria. On Facebook, we are TV360 Online. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and Prevention has said that the COVID-19 Omicron sublineages partly responsible for the current increase in COVID-19 cases in China.
the United States and the United Kingdom have not yet been detected in the country. The NCDC disclosed this on Wednesday in an update on COVID-19 genomic surveillance signed by its Director General Ifedayo Aditifa. Aditi Fadeh that although the COVID-19 protocols and restrictions have been eased, people at high risk for severe COVID-19 must continue to adhere to the recommended non-pharmaceutical interventions such as the use of face masks, good hand and respiratory hygiene, and avoidance of crowded spaces. We'll take a breather now and return with more stories in business to stay with us. Welcome back. Mary Kanu joins us now for more stories in business. Over to you, Mary. Thank you for that, Hello and welcome to Business News. The Director General of the Budget Office of the Federation, Ben Akabwezi, has said that the format of the 2023 budget has been changed to provide detailed information on the revenue and expenditure. Akabwezi disclosed this at the public presentation and breakdown of highlights of the 2023 Appropriation Act. Akabwezi also said the Ministry of Finance changed the order of the budget to address the recurrent issue of budget pardon. In the run-up to preparing the 2023 budget, you know, we only held <coughs> excuse me, detailed bilateral discussions with the ministries, departments, and agencies that have key revenue generating responsibilities to underscore the, that unless we fix that side of the budget, some of the goals that we seek about how much more, what percentage of GDP should be, you know, ideally allocated to different sectors will not be feasible. And unless we fix the revenue side of the budget, the concerns often expressed about, you know, uh, you know, borrowing and isn't that will see, will also not be addressed. As we, you know, the National Assembly has argued that in the exercise of their legislative authority has allowed them by the constitution that the changes they make to the budget cannot be termed budget padding uh, you know because budget padding is a term that describes unauthorized changes to the budget so while it's okay to express views about what uh you know, enters the budget. It's, up, it's important that we appropriately describe it and, and, and label it. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, has recovered about 13 billion naira as proceeds of illegal payments made under the subsidy regime between 2017 and 2021. This was based on the National Inherent Risk Assessment of Money Laundering and Terrorist Financing in the Nigerian Extractive Sector document. The anti graft agency added that there had been diversion of petroleum products to non-designated retail outlets, which is a full and practice that leverages on the full subsidy regime. In 2021, the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation had set fuel subsidy gulped 1.4 trillion naira. We'll take a break now and return with stock market report.
It's another win for the NGX at the close of the second trading day in the new year as the bull showed up with the market rising to close at 0.12%. Market capitalization also tells another good story as 33 billion naira was added to the market to close at 28.1 trillion naira. Now compared with the previous trading day, today's data shows 265 million volume of shares were traded in 4,156 deals. Now the gains were propelled by gains from the consumer goods and services sector as well as gains from 21 equities. A switch now to the global scene. FTSE continues its bright start in 2023, closing its second trading day at 0.41%. Dow Jones also trailed in the same line, closing at 0.68%. However, Japan stocks Nikkei closed lower as losses in the chemical and mining sectors led shares lower at 1.45%. Well, that's the stock market report for Lashade. Back to you. Well, many thanks, Mary, for that update. And on the foreign scene, the last surviving astronaut, Walter Cunningham, from the first successful crewed space mission in NASA's Apollo program, has died at the age of 90. Cunningham was one of three astronauts aboard the 1968 Apollo 7 mission, an 11 day flight that's been live broadcast uh, and paved the way for the moon landing less than a year later. The Apollo 7 astronauts won a special Emmy Award for their daily television reports from the orbit, during which they clowned around, held Himara signs, and educated athletes about space flight. It was NASA's first crewed space mission since the deaths of the three Apollo 1 astronauts in a launch pad fire on 9, uh, 27th January 1967. And in sport, Africa table tennis champion Cordry Arena has expressed great delight after completing his transfer from Bundesliga side TTC to Russian champions Fakel Gazprom Orenburg for the rest of the 2022 to 2023 season. While in Germany, the Nigerian table tennis superstar helped Fulda to the semi final of the German Cup and the Bundesliga playoff last season. After spending the last two seasons in Germany with Fulda, Aruna says he's ready for a new challenge in Russia with his new club. And that's a size of our news bulletin. Many thanks for watching. I am Fola Shadi of Green Day. Bye for now.